We all know that COVID-19 was an enormous shock. But what you might not know is that the pandemic's impact on young people is a ticking time bomb. It threatens to reduce lifetime earnings and increase inequality for decades to come. COVID-19 knocked individuals off course at critical moments in their lives. Our report, Collapse and Recovery, looks at the impact this had and presents urgent actions needed to reverse the damage. The report focuses on human capital. That is the health, knowledge, and skills that people accumulate over their lifetimes. Often, it's the only asset poor people have, and it's what determines a person's productivity and earnings. So what was the pandemic's impact on young people? Let's begin with early childhood. It's a critical period for brain development, and it really lays the foundations for skills such as literacy and mathematics. Because of the pandemic, very young children miss essential vaccinations and stop going to preschool. There was also unprecedented stress in the families. The declines observed in cognitive and social-emotional development are alarming. For example, in Bangladesh, toddlers tested in 2022 lagged far behind in skills compared to toddlers tested in 2019. Why does this matter? We estimate that these declines will translate into a 25% reduction in earnings when these children are adults. A setback this large would have enormous impacts across societies. The pandemic also resulted in school closures everywhere. Over 1 billion children in low- and middle-income countries missed at least one year of in-person schooling. And despite enormous efforts in remote learning, the data show that kids did not learn during the closures. In fact, our estimates show that on average, each month of school closure led to one month of lost learning. For some students, losses were even greater, as many forgot things they had already learned. These learning losses are expected to reduce earnings around the world by $21 trillion. This will affect the well-being of millions of families worldwide. The last stage of the life cycle we study was youth. This is another crucial stage when people are making important decisions such as whether to stay in school, work or raise a family. COVID-19 led to dramatic drops in employment and a worse transition for young people into the labor market. We saw a substantial increase in the number of young people who were neither enrolled in school or training nor working. In Pakistan alone, the pandemic created 1.6 million additional idle youth. In several countries analyzed, there was little sign of recovery, even after 18 months. Being unemployed or holding a low-paying job when you first enter the labor market can result in scarring. Evidence suggests that this scarring can last up to 10 years. In all these stages, early childhood, school age and youth, the impacts of the pandemic were consistently worse for children from poorer backgrounds. These findings should worry all of us. People who were under the age of 25 when the pandemic hit will make up 90% of the prime age workforce of 2050. Faced with this true collapse in human capital, what can countries do? The good news is that there are evidence-proven strategies to recover these losses. Extending the coverage of pre-primary education and improving its content is a good example. It has shortened benefits, helping children become more prepared to learn. And over the long term, it has been shown to increase college attendance and earnings. It has even been shown to lower the propensity to commit crime. For school-aged children, simply having kids back in school will not be enough. How can a child who stopped going to school in second grade and stayed home for a year be expected to follow a fourth grade curriculum? It'll be important to match instruction to these students' levels of learning. Increasing instructional time and catch-up programs like tutoring can also reverse learning losses. Youth desperately need help for a good start in the labor market. For countries where youth employment has not recovered, Training, entrepreneurship programs, and apprenticeships are particularly important. All of these programs across all three life stages will not only address human capital losses. Once you factor in increased individual earnings and tax revenues and a lowered need for social assistance, most of these programs end up paying for themselves. 
In some cases, to address specific losses in human capital, a health solution will be the most appropriate, while in others, it might be an education or a social protection solution. But in most cases, we need solutions that bring these sectors together. When we step back and look at how systems responded during the crisis, we found that very few took integrated approaches. This has to change. It is nearly impossible to overstate the severity of COVID's impact on young people. It's not too late, however, to do something about it. But it is now or never. If we fail to act now, the losses documented in this report will become permanent. Together, we can meet this critical challenge. So let's get started.